Hey guys, thanks for clicking into the video. In this build, we're going to be covering Jason Todd's character Red Hood from the Batman series. Alright guys, so to start off, we're just going to jump onto Kira to set the G-code for the Red Hood helmet. Now as you can see, we tilted the helmet slightly forward, almost onto its chin. We got this idea from one of Frankie Bill's videos where he goes through some of his helmets he builds himself. He also goes through some of his settings which I'm going to reference in just a moment. For more information on this video, I'll provide a link in the description below. Now, the idea with this particular helmet is that by tilting the head forward, it still maintained a lot of its stability due to where its center mass is placed, as well as what support structures we used. Some of the key takeaways we got from Frankie Bill's video, and it could possibly help you, is to use one, wraps for your plate adhesion. This helps a lot with stability in your overall build. Another thing to play around with is your support overhang angle. We have ours set to about 70 degrees. The long and short of the overhang angle is that it will minimize and only place supports where necessary. Basically, the lower the overhang angle, the more supports Cure will naturally place in your build when you slice it. By minimizing the amount of supports you have in your prints, the less wastage is going to occur when it comes to using whichever material you're going to use and alongside being more time efficient. I think overall this print took us just under two days to complete when we got everything just right in the settings. This build is actually super beginner friendly because you can see from the 3D print even by itself we were lucky enough to have some red PLA plastic to highlight this but even by itself already it looks to a certain standard finished. On top of this you have just a lot of open flat surfaces and not a huge amount of details on the mask so you don't have to worry about being super delicate with sanding and you can use the machine sander for this which will save you a ton of time. Now the Red Hood helmet has a shiny metallic look to it so we want to get these as smooth as physically possible and your end result will be a pretty direct reflection of how much fine sanding you do so putting in the work here is really going to pay off at the end. With the sanding you're trying to get rid of the layer lines that come out from the 3D print. To ensure a smooth finish we started off with a tougher 80 grit before moving on to hand sanding with higher grit paper. And so this will be the helmet after the first round of sanding. With hand sanding it's just a case of going up in the grit. We started off here with a 180 grit to just go over the full helmet before moving on to a 240 grit and then finally with a 400 grit to get that smooth finish. With this you can always wrap the sandpaper in a sponge or a sandpaper block to make it a little easier on your hands while you're sanding down but for me because there wasn't too many details involved with this and, and it was just a lot of smooth surfaces it wasn't hard to go over just by hand. So that would be the basic sanding done and the next step will be moving on to the primer. With the primer we use a generic hardware store primer for which this time I bought their own store brand one and I will never do that again so if you're from around Ireland do not buy Woody's brand spray primer the stuff is terrible and it leaks so the consistency of the spray isn't great and you end up having to move closer and pull back which can cause dense pools of paint so this is not what you want. If you are from Ireland though I'd highly recommend Halfords for legit primer spray paint they do a lot of car paints which works surprisingly well with 3D printing. And so there you have the helmet with its layer of primer, which we will sand down one last time with a high grit of 240 and then finally 400. With this part we were using a high grit because we don't want the primer to come off, but just allow a super smooth finish. Once finished with the 400, it's now ready to be painted. So the first cut we gave it was a layer of gold chrome and the reason for this is it creates a mirror like finish, obviously not as reflective as an actual mirror but it allows it to have more shiny and metallic with the layers that we put over it. For this we used Halford's brand gold chrome enamel spray paint and have the mask facing upwards in order to let gravity do its work and prevent any pooling of paint. We gave it one light layer of chrome and after waiting 10 minutes we moved directly onto applying the red paint. The 
red paint we used was again a generic hardware store spray paint and the color we used is ignition red but if i was to do this build again which we absolutely will do in future because it's super straightforward would be to pick a darker red but a little money saving tip if you're like me and you don't want to just keep buying multiple slightly different options of spray paint and since each can is like 13 to 18 euro here it's just not necessary to buy multiple slightly different red it's only really if you're at that next level you want to get really specific with the color it makes sense but if you're just starting out and just pick whichever red color you think looks close to what you're trying to get just to build up a collection over time because it's only going to slightly change the look and that also comes down to personal preference. When spraying the red we used super light coats and only did about two to three coats in total before moving on to hand painting the black details around the eyes and the intents on the sides of the helmet. For this again we're just using generic black acrylic paint and we did this hand painting using two different brushes one with a wider head just to cover the more areas around the eyes and the thinner head for the indents. If you're like me and don't have steady hands don't worry at all because the beauty of this part is just to keep a cloth or a bit of toilet paper handy so you can literally just wipe off the paint if it overlaps and goes over areas you don't want it to and you can still come out with super clean precise lines and edges. Just make sure to wipe it quickly though otherwise it'll start to dry and smudge and leave behind marks. So there you have the basic red hood completed but again we want this to look shiny so we went over it with two coats of semi-gloss clear finish again if i was to repeat this build i would use full gloss instead of semi to make it look really shiny <laughs> So with the gloss coat done you could definitely just leave it as is and it'd be a completed red hood helmet but we wanted to give it a weathered look using silver acrylic paint to make it look more chipped and worn down on the exposed parts and what's great about using a tub of silver acrylic paint is if you're just using it for weathering effects this one tub of paint which costs like five euro will pretty much last you forever personally i find adding little details like weathering although super simple and small adds so much more depth and texture to the helmets especially if you're building with the intention of just displaying it and there you have it, the completed Red Hood helmet with weathering. We hope the video helped and if you enjoyed please feel free to like, share and subscribe for more content.